So Richard, good evening to you. I am so excited yes, that you are with me today. Pastor, thank you. It's an honor to be on here. Um, um, like I mentioned before, I watched your videos. Of your general in the faith, man, you've been doing this for a while, and um, the Lord's really been using you. You blessed my myself, my family, and I, I respect you and appreciate you. So it's an honor to be on here. And Richard Lorenzo Jr., if you haven't heard of him or seen him well today, you're going to. Um, he's a senior pastor and a founder founder of the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, along with his wife, uh, co-pastor Marie Carline Lorenzo. They lead this movement, raising also three children. Not only that, but he expresses his faith through rap, music, and has a passion that extends to his role as the CEO of Remnant Music Records. But we want to dive in into his testimony today and really expose the works of darkness, but also point people to Jesus. During this season, holiday season, Mer Merry Christmas season, we want to point people back to Jesus and at the same time expose the kingdom of darkness. So Richard, if we start from the beginning, tell me how did God spare your life even before you were born? So, Vlad, Pastor, I, I was I was born premature. So, um, my mother, you know, she, when she gave birth to me, she couldn't see me for two weeks because she had to heal. I mean, literally, um, almost died. She almost died. I almost died. Um, born months months early. So before I was even born, I, the enemy was trying to take me out. Um, so my mom always would say that I was special, but you know, being raised Catholic, you know, my mother, um, I love her and I honor her, and she loves me. You know, great, great relationship. We just never had that deep intimacy with Jesus. But yeah, before even being born, you know, um, the enemy tried to take us out for sure. It seems like a lot of people are like that. Before they came on the scene, there was an attack on them, even in the womb. I mean, we see similar things happening in Egypt. Uh, Pharaoh was trying to wipe out children. We're seeing same similar thing happening uh, with Jesus. Even though Jesus, when uh, Herod was killing babies, Jesus was no longer in the womb. He was already a boy. But there's this attack because I actually had a similar thing. I was actually born, Richard, during a um, Chernobyl explosion. So when that explosion happened, and I was not very far from that. Now, far enough that I wasn't affected where my body parts were falling out, but mm. I wonder if that had to do with my birth defect as well, because during the birth, there was a very difficult challenge. And in fact, when I was my mom was pregnant, similar thing, they, they said that I will, will not make it, and if I make it, I'll be handicapped. And then first two years spent being really in and out of hospital. One time, actually, I died, and uh, they brought me back. My, 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 my pastor now was the one that prayed me out. And so a lot of times wow. these attacks in your infancy could be a sign that the enemy maybe is sensing something already and doesn't want us to come on the scene to destroy his kingdom. How was your life now was when you were growing up? So growing up, again, like my parents um, love me, Puerto Rican household. Um, my parents come from the island of Puerto Rico. My brother and I were born in Fort Lauderdale, um, Florida. Um, Broward County is like close to Miami, connected to Miami, but about 30 minutes away. So growing up, I was raised around, um, you know, Caribbean, you know, people and a lot of street stuff, just um, a lot of sexual morality, a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking. But I tried to stay away from that stuff. My mother would always, you know, you know, press press in and just, you know, hey, make it. You got to make it. You got to you got to go to college. And, you know, my parents, you know, I would say, you know, between poor and medium, like like lower middle class, you know, um, you know, enough to where we weren't starving, you know, on the street corner, but my parents always made a way to make sure we had food, we had clothes, we had shoes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have the, the newest pair of Jordans or anything like that, but mm -hmm. we made it, you know, every day. But, um, yeah, man, growing up, it was just, I just always had this double life mentality. Like mm. I, I want to fit in with my friends. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like that guy that nobody, you know, like, like a, like a lame guy. But at the same time, I, um, I want to make sure I get, maintain my grades and my GPA. So. I lived a double life. Uh, so, I, so I, you were you were really good in school, right? I was. Um, since I since um in elementary school, you know, I had a lot of uh, behavior difficulties. They actually mm. uh, they said I had ADD. I went mm. to a psychiatrist and all that. They almost put me on Adderall, but my grades were so high they couldn't keep me back. They tried to keep me back because of behavioral issues. Like you know, mm. I, could, I didn't listen. Always like you know, running around fighting and different things. But um, in first grade, you know, it was my grades. I just, I was, I, I, I scored so high on all the tests, so they couldn't say anything, and I knew it. I was, mm -hmm. I was like a, you know, a prideful little kid. I knew I, 
like I just I just get good grades, I could do whatever I want type True. of deal. So it was it was since I was living. And when you say you were living a double life, so what did you do uh, outside of those good grades? Oh man, in like in elementary school, mm -hmm. uh, man, man in elementary school I would I would steal. I mean, fight a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, some some of my my closest friends, we became friends because of fighting. You know, mm -hmm. um, just really rejected a lot of um. You know, like the 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 daycare. The I mean, the preschool that my mom put me in was in a really bad area in Fort mm -hmm. Lauderdale. So I was raised around that type of environment, learning how to curse at a young age, and my parents being from the Caribbean. You know. Coming home saying curse words, the first thing my dad would do is get the belt, you know, and and you know, in, in a lot of I think your parents physical... probably were hanging out with my parents too because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of those a lot of those belt belt um you know in Puerto in Puerto Rican I mean Spanish they call it a uh, fuerte it's like you, like put your hands on the bed you know put your put your pants down and ba ba yeah you try to cover up and you know but yeah that that was that was um basically um what I dealt with you know just mm -hmm. living a double life like getting in trouble a lot, you know, they have the yellow and red and green cards, green cards mean good, yellow mm -hmm. means, you know, and red is like, you're, you're, you can't even go to recess. I, most of the time always had a red card, just had a, tr had a, had a hard time um, listening to authority. Mm. It just, it had a very difficult time since I was in elementary school and it never went away. And I know it's spiritual, you know, and um, because it's, it's, it's generational. My, mm -hmm. my dad dealt with that as well. Um, my grandma was a Holy Spirit filled woman of God. I mean, mm. You know, I didn't know this till I got saved, you know, and like years later, like a long, decades later, mm -hmm. but she was casting out demons, mm -hmm. you know, healing the sick, like really powerful woman of God evangelist, you know, apostolic moving in, in power, love Jesus, you know, consecrated to the Lord. But my dad, you know, his, um, his brothers and sisters kind of, it, it skipped a generation, you know, and my, my grandma actually, um, when I was a newborn, my dad took me to Puerto Rico to the mountains. And you know she was already waiting. God already told her that we were we were coming. Oh, you know, wow. back then th there was no email, there was no, mm -hmm. you know, cell phone. It was just it was beeper and uh, and and house phone. And my dad never even told her anything. Even in his you know his sin, his his iniquity that he was living in. You know he just he brought me out there and my grandma blessed me. You know, prayed over me, anointed me with oil, and dedicated me to the Lord. And told my dad, you know, hey, you need to dedicate your son. Like no mm -hmm. matter what happens, this he's the Lord's. My dad, you know, he told, he, he, I didn't know, I didn't know any of this till I got saved. You know, oh, my wow. dad kind of kept it from my brother and I. So I was marked. I was marked mm. as a baby, you know, and my, and my dad had to actually sneak it. He had to sneak it because my, my mother, you know, and her family had diehard Catholics. You know, they didn't, they didn't, they, there was a lot of division, a lot of division with my mom and my dad's family, you know, like my grandma, the one who's, uh, she's in heaven now that was Holy Spirit filled. She didn't go to my my father's um wedding because because he was marrying a catholic woman it was kind of like a little religious you know she repented later and mm -hmm. you know made made amends and made peace before she passed but she, away but, but she's the one that pretty much your dad brought you to and she prayed for you and god put that mark man said that that dedication that uh, yes. baby dedication that children dedication the the power that grandpas and grandmas have uh, the power that parents have is so crazy because you know then you you go off into the deep end but that mark kind of brings you back into that. At the age of 20, you moved to the New York. You had this encounter mm -hmm. with the sleep paralysis and a demon that actually tried to enter you. How did you escape that demon? So it actually happened twice. First time I heard, uh, I heard, um, like I actually was paralyzed sleep paralysis, and I and I heard a demon not, like knocking on the the closet door, and I, I couldn't move. And I remember I felt fear. But I kind of got out of it. I was like, okay, that maybe I'm trip, maybe I was tripping, maybe I wasn't true. But the second time, that's when um I actually felt the demon getting closer to me to enter me. I could hear the demon almost in my mind, like laughing, like, like, I got you now. And I remember it was so traumatizing, so um, I was so I was so in fear. I began to like to cry. I be tears began to come out, even though I couldn't move. And all I like the only thing I reverted to was the Lord's Prayer, what I learned in um in Catholic church. You know, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be. I memorized it. You know, vain repetitious. Like I didn't really understand it, but I just remember, like in my head, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, and and then the demon started getting angry. Like, and then a light came, boom, and the mm. demon left. And I remember being ministered to back then, and um, that hey, you're going down a bad path. You know, you need to you need to stop doing this. You need to you need to you need to follow God and all these things. And you know, I came out of the sleep paralysis, freaking out. Like I remember, it was it was. It so was, was this was this an understanding that you got when you got this light, or was this light spoke to you? 
this like it's so like the way the way I was being spoken to by the demon and even the light that came was like it was almost like telepathic like it was in mm -hmm. in my in my spirit like in my soul like it was it was it wasn't voice it wasn't words it was it wasn't in the physical it was in the spiritual realm mm -hmm. and and I just knew I knew this light was from the good side I didn't know is this is this was this like Jesus was this like an angel was this like I didn't know but I knew that this light came because I prayed the Our Father mm -hmm. you know about the Lord's prayer. Um, back, mm -hmm. you know, Catholics call it the Our Father. I knew that it was because of that. That's the only reason that light came and that demon fled. I knew it was a demon. I knew the demon was laughing. I knew the demon really felt like I got you now. It's over mm -hmm. because the night before that that encounter, you know, we had a, my friend and I, and you know, it was completely wrong. We had a home invasion. We robbed the house and did all types of crazy stuff. It was just, it was wrong. But yeah, we did some wild stuff. Got drunk and. I was sleeping actually next to a, my ex-girlfriend and everything and it was just a it was a traumatic experience and it was to wake me up mm -hmm. but um and it didn't it didn't stop me i actually got worse oh I got really worse after that i mean you even went yeah. and started doing lsd oh yep that's when um you know as, as time went by i went i was seeking something you know i was i was trying to figure out the purpose of life you know that was the one thing that always tormented me like what are we doing here how come how, how come nobody cares nobody questions this you know i'd be smoking and drinking with my friends like, guys, what's the purpose of life? Do y'all think about this? Man, you're tripping, man. Just keep smoking, bro. What's wrong with you, man? Asking all these crazy questions because everyone was just so focused on girls and money and and popularity and what's who, who could dress the best and designer and, and, and tr you know, traveling. So, man, I, but I always had that question just running in my mind, running mm -hmm. in my mind. And God used that because um then eventually, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to get spiritual. So my brother actually recommended LSD. He had been microdosing, taking LSD, taking LSD, and like, hey man, you going, you need to take it. It's gonna change your life, like, because you know my brother was was actually he was trying to protect me because my brother knew I was I was I was wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing crazy things. Like the things I was doing was like, you know, I should be dead or in prison. So my brother was actually trying to do something good, like maybe you know this experience will, you know, he'll get healing or like he'll have some type of encounter and and change. And on LSD, I actually entered the spirit realm. Ill illegally and I did have an experience and it was it was it was you know people say trippy it was very trippy it was the first time I accessed the spirit realm at that heightened level like it was it was like the sleep the sleep paralysis but on on steroids man like because I was still I was still able to move I was active I mm -hmm. could see things I was seeing spirits back then I didn't know what they were I was mm -hmm. seeing I, I called them energies mm -hmm. but I was but they weren't they weren't just energies they were spirits on people I was seeing things I was I mean, it was it was a whole crazy experience that really like woke me up to me. And I realized at that point, like there is a spiritual aspect to this life. Like, what is this side that I just accessed? And man, I had such a crazy experience. I didn't even sleep that night. I had such a crazy experience, man. I just I I, I was I was scared of LSD. I was like, man, I don't want to take this again, man. Like that was was that happen on the beach in Greece? Yeah, but that was before Greece. That was that was. Again, that was at a point in my life where I was doing crazy stuff, mm -hmm. um, crazy, crazy stuff. You know, I was I was selling drugs. I was in the military. I was living a double life. I mean, man, like some crazy stuff had happened where um, uh, my connection, my plug in L.A., who was sending me the the drugs. Because uh, you because you moved to you moved to L.A. because you heard that uh, weed was grown there and it was legal. I actually moved to um this is later when I came back from Greece I moved I got stationed in San Diego uh -huh. and then I went to Humboldt California which is um it's like Sa San Francisco the bay north north cal 3 hours north of it it's in the mountains it's like it's close to Oregon mm -hmm. and that's like the mecca of marijuana for like it's it's known around the world like everyone it's like it's weird it's, that it's called it's called humble <laughs> yeah humble yeah, right <laughs> it's crazy and and it's actually it's crazy where I went it's called Trinity Pines crazy right Trinity Pines and uh -huh. um, that's where, um, yeah, that's where like like all the, the the Asian mafia, the Mexican cartel, they um they they bring people in, you know, they they get the immigrants to come and they work there for mm -hmm. like slave money, you know, they slave labor, mm -hmm. and they're just growing weed, and the feds don't go back there, people don't go back there, there's no service, it's in the middle of nowhere, there's no real like like formed roads, mm -hmm. concrete, it's just dirt roads, and they call it Murder Mountain, they call it Murder Mountain. It's actually on Netflix if you go, and you know you can look it up on Netflix. It's it, there's a whole documentary on it, but Murder Mountain is known for people. They they go out there looking, you know, to for a dream, and mm -hmm. they don't come back. They get murdered because so did you a whole bunch did, of, did you move there? Were you involved in any of that? 
so yeah, I actually was I, I when I when I got stationed in San Diego, um, got out of the military. You know, I, before that, I went all around Europe, man. I was in I lived in Greece on the island of Crete before I even knew that that was even in the Bible. And um and I in a city called Hanya, and I traveled all throughout Europe. I had all these girls and alcohol, and mm -hmm. still like dibbling and dabbling and selling drugs, but not at a high level. Just enough to make profit, use drugs for free. I always was doing that my entire life. But when I got stationed in Cali. And I and I finally got a plug in Humboldt. That's when I got deep. I got out, I got out, I got out of the military, and um, I found this. Um, I was I was plugged in with the Asian mafia, so that's when it got real. And I and I was making trips to Mexico to Tijuana as well, with the um with the Mexican cartel as well, like um doing business negotiation with different things with them too. Mm -hmm. But um the the weed the marijuana that was that was my um my thing because I was like it's not a hard drug. It's not cocaine. It's not crack. It's not Molly. It's not these pills. Like it's it's good for you. You know, it's medicinal. Mm -hmm. And I took it to a whole nother level, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of weed for really, really, really cheap. I had people I knew all around the US, even outside Portugal, London, London. I knew people that sold or smoked. So I was I was plugging all my friends up, you know, like starting, starting little drug holes where they're at. People that were usually just buying the weed from their connections now became the connection, you know, and I started uh like an apostolic for the devil, right? A demonic, like a demonically apostolic, Demonic you know, apostolic. like, like network, you uh -huh. know, <laughs> like started building for the devil, started building for Satan. And wow. um, it was successful. Like people were making money. My, some of my friends that were dead broke started making, you know, 30, 40 grand a month. They were happy. Like people, you know, I had gang members that were um, like gang leaders that were, um, that, that I was, I was, I was supplying mm -hmm. as well in different cities. So I would fly into cities. I'd pick up my money. Um, that I, cause I would ship the work and, and yeah, man, mm -hmm. it was a one man operation. Like it was me alone uh -huh. with a lot of, with a lot of paranoia guns and, uh -huh. and, a, and a, a lot of, uh, like just strategy. I had a lot of strategy. Like so, I had the gift to, to strategize, uh -huh. but it was for the enemy. So in 2019, there was a package, I guess you were shipping drugs through mail and there was yep. a package that was missing. And of mm -hmm. course you were wanting to know who stole your package. Who did you turn to in order to find out? Yeah, because like I remember, like it was I was so successful in the mail. I had it down to a T. I mean, I had people inside of the mail, the you know the the USPS that it was working for me and everything. So I was like, I'm a hundred percent. Everything's going great. The package goes missing, and I start getting paranoid. Who stole it? Who stole it? And I was dating this girl, and the girl I was dating, you know, I knew she uh, I had many girls at the time, but this one girl specifically that she was uh, she knew voodoo, like she had family that did voodoo. She didn't really mess with it too much, but she had family that did it. So I asked her, like, hey, you know, I can't, in the physical, I can't figure this out. I've tried everything. I've tried everything. I was calling, I was calling the post office, you know, the the, the mail system off of burner phones, mm -hmm. trying to get information. They couldn't even find it. And was I was this, just, I what, wouldn't. Was this package, was was there a lot of drugs in it? You know, it was crazy. It, it really wasn't. It was only, mm -hmm. I mean, at the time, I was sending way, uh, much larger packages. It was, it was worth about ten to $15,000 a package that for that package. But I was sending packages that were worth more than that 40 to 50. So it was, mm -hmm. it was pride. It was just me. Like, I got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want to know who did this. Like it, very, very murderous, angry, revengeful, rejected, prideful, like, you know, I had all these demons, man. And, mm -hmm. and, um, I wanted to figure it out. I'm like, Hey, you know, can you figure this out in the spiritual? I don't believe in that voodoo stuff. I don't think it's real, but is it like, like the, if it's, if it's that real, like you say, can he figure it out? So she called him. And she um she asked him, you know, like, hey, you know, this is the situation. He only spoke Creole. He just he doesn't speak English. And he was like, look, I can figure it out for you. You just got to come to Haiti. And you know, she she came to me with the you know the answer, like, hey, you got to go to Haiti. Just let's drop it. You know, we're not gonna go to Haiti. It's, it's it's very bad out there, and it is what it is. You lost the money. And I was like, all right, we're going to Haiti. Oh. And wow. she was like, no, we're not. She was like, we're not gonna go. You can't go out there. They'll they'll kill you. I was like, no. I'll, I want to go. And if you don't come with me, I'm going to go alone. What's his phone number? And she thought I was, you know, she was like, man, this guy's crazy. And all right, I'll, I can't let you go alone. I'll go with you because she has family out there. And we flew to Haiti. And when we, we touched down in Haiti, I did not know it was that bad. It is like, it is, a, it is a literal third world country. Very bad. As soon as you get to the airport, people are waiting for you outside. Like it's like lines, masses, groups of people. Just like, it's very, it's very sketchy. Um, but we got there and um, her family was connected to government officials. They got us into a vehicle, you know, we drove all the way to um, a city called Jack Mill from Port-au-Prince, which, which was about three hours away. And we went to the uh, her cousin, who was, a, who was a voodoo priest, like a high-ranking voodoo priest in that satanic side. Um, we went to his, uh, his, his, his uh, compound. And I mean, the compound had multiple houses. Like the man was, was, had money. He was well off. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And that's when it all began. I was like, all right, let's do it. You know how much does it cost? And I paid the money to 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 to, to access that. They, they call them loas, which are ancestral spirits, mm -hmm. which is which are demons. Mm -hmm. Um, to to access that demon, you know, you have to pay a certain amount of money. You have to bring rum. You have to like you have to do a whole ritual. You have to partake in it. You have to invest like so, so into this demonic ritual. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, he did it. He had to put on an outfit. They put on music. They start doing this weird dance. And, and all, and all, all of this, this was just so you can find where the package went? That's all, that, That's the only reason I went, just to find out who stole that package. If if it was even stolen, oh, okay. who stole it? I wanted I wanted peace. There was something mm -hmm. in me that was just, I, I, I needed to know. I would not let it go. And in the past, I had lost, I had lost packages before, Pastor. I had lost mm -hmm. packages in the past. And just like, because of the, fed, the feds, I would just be like, whatever, man. We just take that loss, charge it to the game. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep going because I was making so much profit, and I was getting, you know, pounds of marijuana for a hundred to three hundred dollars, selling them, you know, for fifteen hundred and up. You know, that mm -hmm. profit margin's crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I, but I, but I really wanted to know. Like, I was mm -hmm. like, man, I've been so good for the past, you know, almost a year now. We've been really good in the mail. Like, who stole this? I, I felt it in my heart. Like, someone stole it. But I, it, it, it draws even, you all the way to uh, to Haiti. And yeah. so you're there, you're there during this ceremony. Anything happen to you? Yep. Yeah. So I, when I'm watching the ceremony, I got I, 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 I tensed up, like I was real, like um, on guard because it was I never seen I never seen something like that. And when I saw the spirit like possess him, the demon, like him going from regular, just doing the little dance, drinking the alcohol, mm -hmm. they got to smoke, they got to do all these things to create that, that that demonic atmosphere. And then all of a sudden, just shoot, his whole facial features changed. He looked at me like. I'm talking about body language. Everything shifted. It was a it was a demon that mm -hmm. you know that manifested and began to speak. And um, when he began to speak, he he started saying things about my past. They, he didn't even start off saying like you know hello or anything. He started saying this happened to you. Then this happened to you. This and you know the girl I was dating. She was translating and I was. And she was like, "Is that true?" I'm like, "Yeah, it did happen." Oh shoot, yeah, that did happen. Like very detailed things from my past. And I'm just like, man, how does he know this? And my faith was being built up. My faith was being built up in that Which spirit, way? so that 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 way they can put the control. They they used mm -hmm. it for control. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you know, the devil he, he can only predict the future. He doesn't know the future, you know. But but they but the enemy, the obviously demons, angels, the spirit realm, they know the past. They know mm -hmm. what's already happened. So so he's telling me things, and I'm believing. He's reading my cards. He begins to like do some rituals and different things. And I and I told him like, hey, I want to know, you know, who stole my package. Let him know. And I remember he just said, okay, well, if you want to know. You have to come tomorrow. We're gonna do a bigger ritual. We're gonna get a lamb. Um, it was a, no, it was a goat. I'm sorry, it was a goat. We're gonna like we're gonna get this coconut and this thing. And it was like a whole bunch of stuff. I had to pay more money for 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 us to get so that we can do this whole ritual onto this this deity in a whole new like little satanic church. Because the first time I did it was in this satanic building, but the next one was in like this red hut, extremely demonic. Mm -hmm. But the next day, um, I remember we went we went you know. You know, we uh we stayed in Haiti. We went to like a little hotel, got some food. Next day, early morning, got up, went, and it was like this red hut. And as soon as I walked in, I saw like a human skull, a literal human skull on the altar, a whole bunch of statues, different things. And that's when I was like, this, this can't be good. Like this is, I, I was feeling feeling eerie. Like I was feeling, I was for my discernment. I was just like, man, this is this is off. But mm -hmm. I was so prideful. And I was I, I wanted to know because both of your so, Christian you know, your Christian grandma's background or your dad's and your Catholic I mean both backgrounds kind of pretty much tell you even though Catholics sometimes kind of wear off into some things but there's still there's the common understanding that voodoo is is not good exactly exactly so I, I always always knew that like but in my mind I was like I didn't believe in it I was like oh if you don't believe in it it's not true you know if you don't believe in it it's like so. But now I'm saying like this stuff is real. Like this is this is this is going down. Like this is something I've never seen, and and it's real. And you know, again, the, an, another spirit possessed them, another ancestral spirit, which is which is a demon, and began to speak. And I remember the demon, the demon, the spirit spoke through him and said, you know, when you get back, the person who did it is going to snitch on themselves. When you get back, you'll you'll find out. And you know this and that, and recommending all these things. You should start this business. Um, you should you should. You should call me or on WhatsApp, like, let me know when you're going to send a package and I could bless it. You could just, you know, pay this amount of money so I could protect it. And, you know, and the demon was telling me, you know, a lot of stuff about how drug dealers come from all over the world to Haiti to get the packages from different countries to, into the U.S. and all this stuff. And I was like, man, you know, like, again, he said a lot of stuff in my past to build mm -hmm. up my faith. I was like, maybe this is true. Maybe this is not. But I honestly was like, man, we wasted our money. I can't believe this. 
why did this happen? Why did I come out here? Like, I was really doubtful, like, mm -hmm. accusing her, like, man, you just, man, this was a whole scam. Like, yeah, he said some real things. It was very real. But mm -hmm. why didn't he tell me about the package? And we got back to California. And then um, that's when things started getting real. Friends, people I knew that were in that, the drug game with me, began to call me, you know, and have, we're having conversations, just regular, like, yo, what's up, bro? And just talking. And then they would just manifest in anger or manifest and just, yeah, that's why I did it. And I was, bro, what did you just say? And then they'd hang up the phone. And I, and, and it was people close to me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started getting really, really paranoid. Like, wait, hold up. They just, why did they just say that? Why did they just say that's why they did this and did that? And I started getting super paranoid. They didn't say specifically word for word, I stole the package, but mm -hmm. they were insinuating things. They were insinuating why they they crossed me or did this. And, mm -hmm. and I started getting so paranoid. I started isolating myself. That's when I started going deeper into witchcraft. So now at this point, I'm like, man, what he said came to pass. Mm. This is crazy. Like, I want to call him again. So I'm he's in Haiti now. I'm calling him. You know, he's he's communicating through WhatsApp and all this stuff. But I was like, man, I go, there's got to be voodoo priests in L.A. Like, I was like, all right, let's go to L.A. And, you know, I'm going to L.A. And I, and I went to voodoo priests that were... You know, they had pictures on their wall with celebrities, man, like celebrities like like Snoop Dogg and different people that were actually doing witchcraft with them that hired them mm -hmm. as well. And I was I was getting I was doing more research. And now they're starting to tell me deeper things like, oh, you know, your this is your ancestral you know line. This is where your family comes from. And this is what you're called to do. So now the package is like kind of just doesn't even matter anymore. Like, I'm just like, I want to figure out the truth. Like, this is this is this is real. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a spiritual side. Of of like of spirituality that I've never experienced, because mm -hmm. in the Catholic Church, my mom would bring me faithfully every Sunday, but I never had an, had a supernatural encounter, a spiritual experience. I never seen a miracle. I never seen any of that. Like at a, you know at a church service, so like now I'm seeing real things. I'm like this has got to be it. This is it. This is what it was the whole time. And man, I got deep. I started going to many psychics in L.A. I started going to um all types of mediums. I was I was I was I was going to mediums that were accessing accessing what they call their family their family their dead relatives which are familiar spirits mm -hmm. the Bible talks about it which are really just demons mm -hmm. um, that that can shape shift into the image of their relatives and appear to them so that they think oh yeah this is my relative mm -hmm. but it's not it's a demon that probably was that was that a, gen a generational spirit that's been messing with your family bloodline mm -hmm. to convince that all these people but yeah man I was so I was they, getting deep and, and actually and they told you. And you alluded to this that you were destined to be a warlock. Or you were destined to yep. do this as well, and you actually yep. started to prepare for that. What did your yep. preparation involve? So I went to New Orleans, and um, um, I actually went just into New Orleans. I I, I found this well-known warlock, and um, and I, when I when I went there to ask him questions, because I had a lot of questions, mm -hmm. you know, studying, you know, bringing my, you know, just notepad and paper and pencil, just ready to, to, to take notes. Wow. Um, I saw Solange Knowles walk in, Beyonce's sister, literally a famous singer. She's a R&B singer, mm -hmm. pop singer. And when I saw her walk in with her boyfriend, and you know, I'm behind the register, I'm behind the register being trained up by this warlock. Mm -hmm. And he, she came and bought all these witchcraft items. And he's like, so familiar with her. Hey, how you doing? Like, yeah, you know, I can't do anything right now because I'm with um, him and I'm, 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 you know, I'm training up a client. She's like, okay, you know, no worries later on. Like, and he and I'm looking at him like, bro, this is Solange knows. He's like, yeah, man, this is she comes in here regular, regularly. Her family does too. And I'm just like, man, this is what I'm called to do. This is it. Like, I'm gonna be a warlock and people like Beyonce and and all these famous Hollywood people. Like, I'm gonna be the guy behind the scenes that they get the power from. This is what it's so is. So I'm gonna they, pause this, for just a second. So he said that her family comes there too. Yep. Like he, like all her family, like. Beyonce, that right? Means Beyonce and, and all, all of them. They're all into that stuff. Like mm -hmm. all her family, it's 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 our, it's our, it's it's out there. I didn't even know any of this in the world. Mm -hmm. When I came to Christ and I started doing my research, it's it's in the open. Like it's mm -hmm. it's not even they don't hide it. So you they don't hide so it. So you you go to Haiti to find where your package went. Go from from package uh, looking for package to now going to LA and other places to talk to psychics. Mm -hmm consult the familiar spirits and now you're in New Orleans as student and you're learning the the crafts and the witchcraft yes. and you're seeing these famous people walk into that place and that pretty much just encourages you hey you're on the right track you, you're yep. gonna be famous you're gonna help people and you're gonna have keys to this realm 
Yeah, I had this whole plan that I'm, I was gonna um I was gonna be selling drugs on on the, behind the scenes, be the be the guy in the background. I actually wanted to start a record label. I wanted to like like just fund the record label and have young artists come. Like I had a whole plan, Pastor. I was like, I'm gonna do this and make a lot of money, and I'm gonna be the man. I'm gonna be like a like a Scarface, Tony Montana type. You know, like you, you know, because growing up where I'm from, like that's like a famous movie. You know, people, mm -hmm. young kids want to do that. So yeah, man. I, I thought. I, How long I was your training? Was How long was your training for? And what did you do was, during it, your training? It, it was it's about a six month training. Um, mm -hmm. I was told to do rituals. I I was given, I was told to go to st uh, to 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 stop signs and um four way intersections and put different um altars. I didn't know they were. That's what it was back then. But coconuts and and pineapples and in a specific way with a specific amount of money and put them there for a God. And when I, when I put them there, don't look back, drive away. Cause if I look back, I can be killed. Like I was told all these things I was given herbs and I had to take specific baths with specific herbs for protection every morning and night. I had to put coconut water on my head every morning to protect me from evil, from, from what they call evil, like negative mm -hmm. negativity. Um, I was, I was, I was reading a lot about, about different practices, the books, the education they gave me. Mm -hmm. I was preparing to go to Haiti. So the warlock in New, in New Orleans was, was, uh, was preparing to take me to Haiti to get inducted in the cemetery, which is what he explained that I had to be in the cemetery for a certain amount of weeks to do rituals and, and like, and it's like a consecration, right? But it's for the devil. What do you and mean, what do you mean I'll, inducted? So inducted is like ordained, like you have to go there. You have to go under an actual voodoo priest that like that, that, that can ordain you, like 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 demonically ordain you, demonically mm -hmm. anoint you mm -hmm. to be able to 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 be to be to be lifted up, to have your own thing going on, to learn more secrets, to learn more things. Mm -hmm. And, so and that to, has to that, happen on the cemetery. It has to happen. Like it has to happen. It had to have, like the, the type of voodoo I was doing, specifically Haitian voodoo and um, Puerto Rican santeria, like Latino santeria. Mm -hmm. It had to be done that way. Like he was gonna take me to Haiti. Because he was a Puerto Rican guy who was covered, right, demonically covered by a, a Haitian woman, which is the witches. They're called mambos. They're, they're called mambos from Haiti. Mm -hmm. If you know about like people that know about voodoo, they know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So they, they, he was gonna take me there cemetery. I was gonna have to like literally. He was telling me I was gonna have to fast all this stuff to be able to receive what I need to receive. He didn't get into too much details, mm -hmm. but he just said you had to go. And then after Haiti to Puerto Rico to do the exact same thing in a city called Ponce, Puerto Rico, which is where there's a lot of um, African mm -hmm. witchcraft, which they call Santeria. Mm -hmm. So I had this whole plan, like, man, this that's it. And he's like, and then after that, you come back to New Orleans and we'll begin to train you even more to the next level. So I'm, I'm training at the level he had me at. I'm learning about all these different things. I'm doing my own research uh -huh. on the side. You know, my, 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 girl, my girl ends up getting pregnant with my first child. She didn't even think she can get pregnant. She was actually told by a witch and a warlock She'd never be able to get pregnant. Was this the same girl that took you to Haiti in the first place? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. She ended up getting pregnant. And I'm like, man, because I have all these girls. Like, I'm I was not faithful. Like, mm -hmm. even though I was in fornication, you know, regardless, I wasn't faithful to any woman ever. So mm -hmm. I'm like, man, she's pregnant. But I'm like, man, you know what? I'm getting older. I want a kid. You know, it is what it is. You know, hey, look, let's move closer to family. Um, in South Florida, where your parents are and my parents are, but not too close. Let's move to West Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, cool. She didn't want to deal with the earthquakes in Haiti. I mean, Haiti, um, uh, even though Haiti does have earthquakes in mm -hmm. um, California. Mm -hmm. uh, so we left to um. To so, West but you Palm did not end up Beach. going to Haiti for that final ordination. I got saved before it happened. Uh huh. So because got, during this time, so you're moving to Florida, but God starts actually sending Christians to you. Yes, because when I got to when I got to West Palm, I actually got even deeper. I started studying shamanism. I actually went to a shaman, a worldwide, like a world famous shaman, actually. Um, that that came in from Brazil that was training me up and he told me the same thing So now he's teaching me how to balance chakras. I mm -hmm. went to a crystal shop. I was learning how to balance chakras I was learning about crystals. I, I didn't have the little TikTok crystals I had like the big thousands of dollars worth of mm -hmm. crystals like in my house altars I had the Haitian voodoo the the Santeria the shamanism that had a big old evil eye like a $300 evil eye from Africa like I had a whole bunch of beads that were blessed mm -hmm. by warlocks and witches so like at this point I'm like man like all these people there they want me to be like to be to lead in this like this is mm -hmm. like this is my call like you know i'm learning about so much and that's when god because i knew deep down there was never a satisfaction there was never a fulfillment mm -hmm. it was always i gotta do more i gotta mm -hmm. do more it was always like there's a next level but there was never a fulfillment deep within my my soul like it mm -hmm. wasn't I, I knew something deep down and i thought the entire time that i was doing this in the will of god like the highest power 
Wow. I didn't know that the highest power was Yahweh. I didn't know that that Jesus is the highest power. I didn't know that. I didn't so know you, the Holy So you Spirit. thought God know. was okay with this? I thought that God, this is what God wanted me to do. Oh, like wow. this is his will. So I'm like, I'm I'm I would That's talk crazy. to the highest power that I wouldn't call him I wouldn't call him Yahweh, Jesus, nothing. I would just say highest power, creator, the divine, like, like, you know, show me more, show me more, show me more. And I would keep going to these different practices. Like I was, I even walked into a Muslim mosque, spoke to an imam. I started studying Islam because because actually in, in, in voodoo, like the spirits that they were calling where, you know, they, they, they call them warrior spirits from the past. They were ex, some of them were ex Muslim spirits. And it's, it's crazy, man. Like I was doing deep research. So I, I thought Islam had power. And I walked into a Muslim mosque and told them the voodoo I was doing. They were just like real, like, uh, like stay like, no, no, this, you know, Muhammad, this, take this pamphlet, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, and I saw that Islam had no power because mm -hmm. when I was, I, I, you know, from what I, from what I saw and I was like, man, I don't want to, this is, this is just bowing down to a God. They don't, you know, they don't know. I don't know about mm -hmm. this man. Like, the gods I'm bowing down to that at least they they um they sh they're showing up they're showing me certain things mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm I'm experiencing things so man um, so you're encountering these demons from the yep. from the Islam faith yet when you arrive in a in a Muslim mosque you know because Muslims don't necessarily participate in witchcraft and occult but yep. you are encountering the spirits that come from their 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 past and their and their history so pretty much you're dumbling into anything that has any promise of power. Yep, any promise of power. At this point, the drug game was kind of on a hold. I was still selling to make money. I mean, I was I was gambling in, in casinos. I was actually accessing spirits that would take me into the casinos, specifically the Hard Rock in Hollywood. That would that I would go in there and win like twenty thousand dollars. Like I would actually be listening mm -hmm. to these spirits. They were they were they they said I was reincarnated three times. It was a whole but it, man, it was it's it's crazy with all the things they tell you. And I had this Cherokee spirit that protected me, and and I would go in and gamble at the roulette table and leave like. I was so puffed up, like this is it, like very murderous, just still, still drinking, still, you know, living this lifestyle, putting the girl that was pregnant with my first child through a lot. I mean, she was suffering like, man, what are you doing? You're always studying something new. Just stop, just stop, just stop. You know, and I was just like, no, I'm going to keep going. Like, this is what I'm called to do. And man, God started sending people. So the, the man, I, I needed a barber, you know, I needed mm -hmm. a fade. I was in a new area. I didn't have a barber, just left from Cali. So I, I remember, I remember being at the U-Haul facility, you know, we just moved our stuff, you know, just closing out, um, the storage unit that we had and I'm um, asking the guy, yo, where'd you get your haircut, bro? He's like, oh, I got a guy named, um, you know, Paul who's a barber. And I went to this barber, man. And I'll never forget, you know, I walked in, he had his, he had his own little shop and he was an older, you know, African-American dude, real, real cool, you know, could dress. I was like, bro, I was like, you listen to Nipsey Hustle, You listen to this rapper, this rapper. He's like, nah, man, he was listening to Christian music, Christian rap. And he started playing this Christian rap while he's cutting my hair. And I'm just like, nah, bro, you listen to Nipsey Hustle, man, which is in the world is a positive rapper, but really extremely, it's not good at all. They talk about the same thing, murder, drugs, mm -hmm. sex. And I'm, he's just like, nah, man, I don't listen to that. And I was trying to convince him about like, you know, you come on, you listen to this. And he was so firm, like, no, man, I don't, I don't do that. I started talking to talk to him, talking to him about the witchcraft because I had the beads on. And he's just like, not phased, just real serious. Like, man, you know, I'm a Christian, man. And he starts, starts preaching to me, man, like preaching to me. I don't remember specifically that with the things he said, but I remember feeling this peace. I remember feeling like this confidence he had, how he didn't shift. He didn't shift no matter what I said. He wasn't lukewarm. He wasn't, you know, oh yeah, I listen to Nipsey Hussle, but I'm a Christian too. He was straight, like real deal Christian, right? So I'm like, man, this guy's cool, good haircut. I'll keep going back to him, but that, that's crazy, man. I remember even going in the parking lot, getting in my bins I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember like he he actually left at the same time. I pulled up next to him playing Nipsey Hustle, like, I know you listen to this. And I remember him looking at me just like, and driving off, crazy, man. But um, yeah, man, he became my barber even when I got saved. Mm -hmm. But anyways, man, him, he, yeah, that was a big, that was a big thing for me. And then um, people started coming up to me. So the, the next encounter was on actually on Halloween. And there was a guy named Richard, mm -hmm. a white guy, um, a white guy in his, like around the same age as Paul. I remember he just, he walked into this liquor store. I was trying to, to make a deal with these Indians, these Hindu Indians, and this liquor store in a place called PGA, which is a very rich area in West Palm, to start a wine bar. I had this idea of, like, you know, I'm going to launder some of my drug money, start this wine bar. It'll be a great business. You know, I had a business mindset. And, um, and they, were, they were actually agreeing, like, okay, we can do this. And this guy walks in, and he's just like, how you doing, man? God bless you. I'm looking at him like, hey, man, God bless you too, man. How you doing? 
And he's just like, man, I just want to let you know, you, God loves you so much. I just got saved like a week or two ago. I encountered Jesus. He loves you. And this guy starts turning red and crying, like looking at me crying. Like, what is wrong with this guy? Like, why is he saying all this? And I, in my head, I'm like, he doesn't understand that that I have these, these, these spirits on me that are protecting me. That's probably what he senses, but he's mm -hmm. just a dumb, you know, Christian. And he's just like, man, God loves you so much. Man, come to my party tonight. We're having a Halloween party and, and, and you can come. And, and I'm just like, man, what do you do for a living? He's like, I, you know, I, I, I own a contracting company. Like he's mm -hmm. a well-off dude. And in my mm -hmm. head, I'm like business opportunity. I'm there. Like, you know, I'm thinking like business, like, okay, yeah, no problem, sir. Like, let's do it. I can bring my girlfriend. Yeah, no problem. Here's my address. And this guy was so loving, man. Like, so like, like, just like, it didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. So I, we went, me and my girl went and we went to his, uh, his house party for a, Halloween, and you know, again, new Christian, newly saved. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he doesn't he, he doesn't practice Halloween anymore, but just brand new in the faith. You know, still a little bit drinking. That like from he was, but he was in he was in, he was in a liquor store buying alcohol. But God still used him. And we went to this house, man, and he had all these people there, but they would only focus on me and my girl. They were just sitting next to us, and I'm just you know we're listening to them speak, and he kept saying how much God loves me, and mm -hmm. he has, I have a light on me, and he's crying. This grown man. Like that has this big old mansion, right? He, we were in a, it was a, it was a, it was a, a mansion they were renovating mm -hmm. on the water, boats and all this stuff. He, that's what he did. He would go into these, these, um, these high end houses, re mm -hmm. uh, renovate them, you know, and then, and then rent them out or sell them, flip them, you know. And, and he was, he was in there with his family. And I'm just like, why are they so nice? And I'm looking at my girl. She's like, man, this is weird. And I'm like, all right, man. After a while of me trying to shift the conversation to talk about business, mm -hmm. he wouldn't budge. I was like, man, we got to go, man. I appreciate everything, brother. Thank you so much. And he's just like, I love you so much, man. I'm going to be texting you. Come to my church. Come to my church. Come to my church. Okay, bro. Sure. Yep. Okay. And we leave. And I'm like, I told my girl, I'm like, man, they're swingers, bro. They got to be swingers. They were way too nice in my mind. I couldn't understand it. And he would text me all the time, pastor, all the time, always texting me through my whole process. And this is when it got real. Like I said, I was balancing chakras, right? Uh -huh. With um, Sean, I learned how to do all that. I was certified. I even have the videos from the certification and all that mm -hmm. still in my um my Google Drive, but um I haven't released it yet. But yeah, man, I was I learned how to do the chakra balancing. And I remember my girl who was pregnant with my child. She was about seven months now. I was like, hey, I want to balance your chakras with him in the belly because I thought it was good. <laughs> and I remember her being like, all right, you know, she's on the bed. She's like, sure, you know, she's really pregnant. So I take the, the the pendulum crystal with the with the rope and I put it over her belly, and as I begin to do it, it falls off like it breaks off the string, falls on the ground, and the crystal, the pendulum crystal, cracks like breaks in half. Mm. And this is hard. This is hardwood floor. Like mm -hmm. it didn't it didn't make sense. Like mm. like like with physics and just like common like logic, it didn't. And man, we got startled. I remember us looking at each other like, "What was that?" And I was like, "Maybe I could." I remember picking up the the half. The, the half crystal, like, maybe I could use this. And she was like, no, it's not the same. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I was like, all right. And I went on YouTube. I was like, man, I got to look this up. So I start scrolling on YouTube about chakra balancing and different things. And I see a random recommended video <laughs> from um, a, a, Torben, a man. Huh? Yeah, a man <laughs> yeah, you know Torben. Yeah, uh -huh. amen. Torben Sandegar from The Last Reformation. Uh, you know, he's casting demons. I forgot the title. It was like, it was like, it was like a witch gets uh, a rake ex, rake, reiki healer. Reiki healer, demons. yeah. Yeah, it's it's a real popular video he has mm -hmm. on his channel, and I'm like, okay, man, let me let me let me let me watch this video. What is this Reiki healer demons cast it out? And I'm watching like her testimony, and in the video you can see she's getting baptized and he's praying like you know in tongues and, and mm -hmm. deliverance and all that. And I remember watching it, and when it got to that point, feeling stuff inside of me wow. begin to move. Um, like I was just like twitching, and I'm and I'm looking, and and if you watch the video after she gets baptized, delivered, and all that, and testifies, she goes to the streets and starts praying for the sick, and they start getting healed mm -hmm. without a, without without Reiki healing and chakra, just praying in the name of Jesus. And I'm I'm watching this like, and, and she was praying for young kids like, and I, I couldn't. It was like, man, this can't be fake. This is real. These aren't actors. This is real. Mm. And she's testifying, and I I call my girl. Look, Christians got power. There's no way. There's wow. no way. This is not what we knew in the Catholic Church. And they have a map. They still do to this day a TLR map. And I remember, you know, clicking on it, and I find someone local, a lady named Sharon. Man, short, like four foot ten, four foot eleven. You know, American woman who just, man, she was so loving, but so powerful in the spirit, so fervent in the spirit. And um, when I called her, got on the phone call, explained to her everything, told her about who what I do, who I am, what I'm, what I'm dabbling in, mm -hmm. the fornication, and she just was like, okay, all right, 
have you given your life to Christ yet? No, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And she would pray. And when she would pray, I would feel this peace come over me that was just, it just, it was like no other, right? And, I, and I'm like, man, what is this feeling? Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Why is she so confident? Why is she not scared that I do voodoo or, or like not asking questions? Like, mm -hmm. this is, all these Christians are confident. So the guy, Richard, who's been texting me, mm -hmm. me just reading his text messages, not even replying for so long, for weeks, I say, okay, bro, I want to come to your church. Oh, wow. He's like, all right. So he gets excited. Oh, praise God. Okay. I mean, this man was out front of the church waiting for me. Huh. It's called Family Church in, in West Palm Beach. It's like a it's like a real pastoral fami like family church. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember just just getting there. He was waiting outside for us, bro. Like, hey, come. You want some coffee? You want some donuts? What? And he's just he's again crying. Like the guy would not stop mm -hmm. crying. He's a grown man, man. Like he's mm -hmm. he's like, come with me, come with me. Let's sit in the front. I like to sit in the front. And we walk in. And it's a big church, and I'm looking around. Like it's a mega church, beautiful church, beautiful mm -hmm. church. And I'm looking around. I look on the stage, and guess who I see as the worship leader? You know, warming up for 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 worship. Paul the barber. Wow. And I and I look at the guy Richard. I said, bro, do you know who that is? He's like, no, he's our worship leader. I don't, I don't know who he is. Him and his wife lead worship. Oh and my. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> like, okay, this is weird. I look at my girl, like, this is my barber. She's just she's just like, whatever. Like, she doesn't understand what like, like what I'm mm -hmm. feeling because mm -hmm. it was for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just at that point, I'm on, I'm on, I'm right, I'm on. I'm on my toes. I'm like, what's gonna happen? This is crazy. I'm starting, I'm starting to like, you know, feel jittery and mm -hmm. a little nervous. And then they begin to play, play reckless love. You know how you leave the 99, um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. reckless love. And I remember when he, when they start playing that, I look at Richard and he just points at me. He's crying. He's like, this is for you. He leaves the 99 for you, for you. Wow. And I look at him. I broke, Pastor. Wow. I broke, felt like just on my knees. <laughs> I felt the presence of God come wow. over me. The, he got, he got, he he grabbed the pastors. Come, he, they start praying for me. You know, they laid hands. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they um they believed, and I asked them this later. They believe in deliverance. They believe in the supernatural, but mm -hmm. they just they didn't um they didn't they didn't do it at their church. Mm -hmm. Very pastoral worship. You know, a, a, a good word. I just you know, uh, family uh, church. Richard, just pause for a second. How many of you guys already feel the presence of Jesus as you're hearing <laughs> this testimony? Drop that fire emoji right now. If you're just tuning in or logging in, go ahead and hit like to this video or re-watching this. Share this with somebody right now. Somebody needs to hear this. What Richard just shared, how he was involved in selling drugs, all of that crazy stuff, then seeking power, going from Haiti, trying to find a package that he lost. Uh, his was Well, he was involved in selling drugs. And then from Haiti, he goes to L.A. And from L.A., he goes to New Orleans. From New Orleans, he goes to Florida and goes from the Hind uh, goes from learning about all of these santarias and then shamanism and lining his chakras and all of the stuff and then his barber you know who doesn't compromise who listens to this christian rap and leaves some kind of an impression on richard because see when when, when we take a stand for christ and we are bold and loving at the same time the holy ghost is gonna do that work you know and then next thing that happens is this person starts evangelizing to him brings him to his house <laughs> And then what begins to happen is that these chakras don't work anymore and he watches a video, the importance of also YouTube ministry as well because he sees this, something touches him and he ends up going to church and now this song that comes in there starts to really minister to him. He breaks down. But yes. if you watched it from the beginning, you remember that his grandma was the one that dedicated him at a young age and that marked him. And now the Lord is pretty much, in the, in the fact that he was lost, the Lord is bringing him back. So if you're enjoying this already, go ahead and share, hit that fire emoji. So you're at this church, you're breaking down, they start praying for you. Yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, and um, that's when I, I was like, okay, like, I really, I need to get a Bible, you know, and I called the lady Sharon when I got out of the, out of the church, like, okay, what do I do? She's like, hey, you know, get a Bible, like, you, you know, you're thinking, get mm -hmm. it, buy it off of Amazon, you know, like, get a Bible ASAP. So I said, okay. Bought a Bible off of Amazon, waited a few days, it came in. And when the Bible came in, I was like, okay, like I've I've never read a Bible, you know, like I don't know where to start. Let me just go outside by this, by that by the the lake in my neighborhood. I was living in Jupiter Beach in this nice neighborhood. And they had they had a little lake in the in the in the in the, in the middle with these like chairs. It was, a, it was a nice little area. And um, you know, it, it was like it was like a Tuesday midweek. Everyone's at work. My my girl was at work. She was working at Bank of America as a financial center manager, mm -hmm. you know, she's over there doing her thing, busy, busy, busy. And I was just like, all right, let's go. So I sit down and, you know, I begin to, um, to open up the Bible. And as I opened it up before I could even read anything, a guy walking his dog 
just casually walking his dog in the neighborhood, stops me. Hey, you know, this American guy, you know, hey, what are you, what are you, what are you reading right there? And I'm just like, hey, you know, obviously it's a Bible, man. You know what it is. You can see it. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, well, 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 what are you reading? I was like, I don't know. This is the first time I, I don't know what to read. The man sits down with his dog. Come to find out he's a pastor. He's actually a teacher. He teaches the, the word. His name is John. And he just says, hey, man, I want you to start in the book of Romans. And, you know, obviously he knew that the book of Romans have saved, has saved many people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, but, he's, but he obviously was being strategic. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, the book of Romans. He's like, look, you need to download the Blue Letter Bible app. You need to, you need, this is the King James Bible. You need to get something that, that, like NIV to, to that, like, a, like a, to translate it for you so you can understand it. You need to, you need to make sure when you're reading that you actually understand what you're saying. Don't go any further unless you actually understand commentary. He was teaching me all these things and I'm taking notes. I'm like, okay, okay. He's like starting the book of Romans and he, and I start telling him, I was like, look, bro, like I do voodoo, like witchcraft, like I'm in Haitian voodoo. I'm in Santeria. I'm in shamanism. I'm telling him like, I got all this stuff in my house. The man, again, confident. Hey, man, it's the name of Jesus. Wow. It's the name of Jesus. Like, smiling. And I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, why is this guy, this guy not scared mm -hmm. of what I'm saying? Like, it's supposed to be the hot. Haitian voodoo, if you know, like, if people that are in witchcraft, is the strongest form of witchcraft, right? Mm -hmm. So these people are unfazed. And it's the people that you would least expect to be unfazed. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like... And he's just like, it's the name of Jesus, man. Don't worry. It's the name of Jesus. And I'm like, do I have to pay for anything? Is like a ritual? I have to pay for it? Is there like, what, where can I go? What can I do? You know, you have a, you have, you have a, you, you teach the word. Do I have to pay? He's like, man, it's free, man. Start in the book of Romans. Wow. Go home and read it. Here's my phone number. Stay in contact with me. And, um, and, and we'll, and we'll continue from there. So I'm like, this is super coincidental. All right, let me start in the book of Romans and I'm going to make sure that as I'm reading the book of Romans, if I don't understand what I'm reading, I'm going to stop, go on Google, go on YouTube, commentary, make sure I understand it. And I began to read the book of Romans. Pastor, I started getting convicted because mm. as I'm reading the book of Romans, you know, it's the, the gospels in the book yeah. of Romans. I, I start getting touched and I start understanding. I had all these questions like, why does the blood of Jesus save you? Why does a man's blood Save me. I started learning because I'm going on, I'm, I'm researching, I'm, I'm learning and I'm just like, oh my God. And, and it, days are going by. And then December 1st, 2019, I'll never forget. I was in my apartment and it got to a point. I don't remember where I was in. I was at in the book of Romans, maybe seven, eight, 10. I don't know. I don't know where I was at, but I remember just stopping and in my heart, like I believed it. Like I was like, Jesus is the highest power. It's Jesus. It, it was like a knowing so deep. Like I knew in my heart, like, you know, the Bible says, believe in your heart. Mm -hmm. I knew in my heart, the minute I knew that, and I was just, and I allowed it, like I whispered, it's, it's Jesus. Like a light in the spirit realm, like a light came, like something like, boom, and it knocked me down. I knocked to the ground. I was gone for 20 minutes. I was like in and out of my, of consciousness. I was bleh, like, like coughing up, throwing up, like just, just shaking, convulsed. Like I was, I was getting delivered. Mm -hmm. I was getting delivered. I didn't know what was happening. And I remember coming up and just sat down. I did so good about it. I just, I just, I just wanted to like, like, like an utterance. Like I wanted to uh -huh. just release it. Like so I, did, I was speaking in tongues and I, and I just stood up. Did you speak in tongues I'm, before? But like before coming to Christ? Yeah. No, no, never no, spoke. Be, before this, before this encounter? Nope. Didn't speak in tongues. Oh, wow. Never had anyone teach it to me. I didn't even know what it was. I, I just, it felt like it really, like in my belly, it felt so, like I, I just wanted to say something out of my mouth. Like it was like a, wow. I'm not explaining mm -hmm. it. Like you just, I, like, like it's like, you know, when you want to shout, mm -hmm. like I got, like I wanted to shout, like when you get into praise and worship, like, oh, geez, like it was mm -hmm. like, so and, you're getting, like, I didn't know you're getting hit as you're reading Rome, Romans, this light comes in, knocks yes. you out, you're manifesting, you're being delivered. And at yes. the same time, as that process is coming to an end, you, you're sensing something you can't just hold back. You got to release it. And it's not. Yes. It was a fire, like a heat, like a warmth, like an oil, like, it's like wow. something that was extremely soothing and comforting mm. came over me. And it was like inside and on me. Like it was like, it was, it was, I, I've cried before. I've had breakdowns where I've cried alone in my bed. You know, like we all have, but it wasn't that. It was something that was like, I felt freedom. I felt liberation. And I began to pray in songs. And I, and I remember just like, it's Jesus. Oh my God. It's Jesus. Oh my God. I just encountered mm -hmm. God. Like I, what just happened? I couldn't understand. I call up Sharon, the lady, uh -huh. and I tell her what happened. She's like, praise God. I've been praying 
pray. She probably fasted for me. I don't know. But she was like, I praise God. You just encountered the Holy Spirit. You just spoke in tongues. Okay. And I'm like, I'm like, Sharon, and my, my girl's at work. This mm -hmm. is, again, she's not even here. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? I want to do whatever I'm supposed to. What do I do? All right. You got to get rid of the altars. You got to get rid of the witchcraft. You got you can't fornicate. You can't even. And I'm like, can I sleep in the same bed? No, because what looks like sin is sin. You need to separate. Well, I was like, well, I don't have, I don't know where to go. She's like, just sleep in separate rooms. Do you have another room? I'm like, yes. So she's guiding me, discipling me through this. Wow. I'm getting all the witchcraft. I mean, anything that maybe even think it could have been witchcraft. I mean, Vlad, I even threw away a bunch of designer clothes and stuff. I didn't have to throw away, right? Like things that. I didn't have to throw away, mm -hmm. but I was just like, I don't care. Like, this is going away. This gold jewelry. I had, I used to wear this Egyptian um cross, the, mm -hmm. the, the unk, that was, uh, it was 22 karat gold. Like, it was expensive, thousands of dollars. I just put it in the, I didn't, I didn't even want to pawn it. I was like, I'm throwing it away. I don't care. I don't care about the money. I had vacuum sealers that I was vacuum up, vacuum up the marijuana, threw that away, didn't have to throw it away. I had weed, I had pounds of weed that was in a storage. I put everything into a bag. My girl comes home. I tell her, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. She's like, what's wrong with you? Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's Jesus. I want to tell you something. We can't be together. I can't sleep in the same bed as you. I love you so much, but we can't do this. She curses me out. She gets so, I, I put her through so much, Pastor. I put her through like, wow. I put her, like, you know the phrase, I put her, you put her through hell. Like, I put uh -huh. her through hell. Like, it, it was, it was, I put her through a lot and I love her so much, but but, um, and then she just curses me out. And I had this peace that she never was used to because she would come at me sometimes. I would get angry, it'd be a fight, but I was just peaceful. Mm -hmm. So she's like, okay, like, all right, if this is what you want to do, whatever. And she's already in her mind, and I, if her testimony, she says it in her mind, she was already thinking about leaving me. Like, she was like, I'm done with this guy, he's crazy. And, um, but I was like, I'm going to burn all this witchcraft. And something inside of her said, all right, I'm going to come with you. So there was a, there's, there was a wildlife preserve. It's in Jupiter, right across from Jupiter Hospital. There's a wildlife preserve. Mm -hmm. that um that you can walk in and i was like okay we're gonna go at night and then i went into walmart i got this whole camo outfit i got a like a machete i got my gun i got a, i got the lighter fluid i got the wood i got everything man i was like i was like yeah rambo whatever you know like i was i was so fired up man zealous and I, we got this big old bag and we went to the middle of the woods and i remember like seeing we were we were both mm -hmm. seeing shadows like we were seeing things and she was we were we were both i'm like it's not just her both getting scared, like, what, what is this? And I remember John telling me the name of Jesus. So I would just say, Jesus, Jesus, like, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all, that was like my weapon, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and then we went and we started the bonfire. We burned everything. We were hearing pops and cracks and uh, crackles like that were like different, man. It wasn't Crazy. like, I, I've been in bonfires. It was just, uh, it was just, it was just weird, man. And, and It was, then, it was you know, not we, your normal bonfire. <laughs> yeah, it was not, <laughs> no, it was not your normal bonfire. We felt presences around us. Like we could feel it. We were just uh -huh. like, What's going on? So we left, um, went back to the um, the apartment in West Palm, and I told her, like I said, like I can't, can't, I can't be with you no more. Like, like it's not that I'm gonna go date another girl. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I, it's just this is the way it is in Christianity. She was like, okay, I respect it, whatever. And I was like, look, please read the Book of Romans, please seek God, because I was like, if I was to marry you, you'd have to be saved, and I'd have to see, like, I actually have to see that you're really in Christ, like fruit, mm -hmm. because I'm not gonna just do it for no reason. She was like, whatever. That night, I decided. I'm done with pornography. I was addicted to porn my entire life. Vlad, like, since the age of 11, 12, like, I, but before there was even cell phones, like, mm -hmm. dial-up internet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. printing out pictures. Like, I was addicted to pornography wow. for so long. And um, and I remember that night, I made, I, I made a decision. I'm done. I'm never watching porn again. Like, I'm like, I'm just done. And I remember going to sleep on this blow-up mattress on the floor, and I remember seeing two spirits. I saw mm. two spirits standing next to my bed. They looked like human spirits, like looked like these like like human figures, all black, like dark spirits mm -hmm. standing next to my bed. And I felt the most overwhelming feeling to like watch porn, like lust, like to message a girl, like something. Like I, I felt that feeling. And I remember shaking in my bed. I was like, I, I didn't know what to do. And again, all I knew was Jesus. I, I, I said the wow. name of Jesus and I fell asleep. I literally got knocked out. Wow. And the next morning I was completely completely delivered from pornography addiction. Wow. That that feeling in my stomach to want to watch it, the mm -hmm. lust, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Was gone, bro. Like That's gone. Incredible. Like and, and since for instance, that since since I got saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not boasting of myself. I have not watched pornography. So that's why when people come to the altar, you know, oh, I got a pornography addiction, I don't know what to do. You just gotta you have to not want it. You mm -hmm. need to like just repent, and that's that's and that's when the deliverance happens. And then and, when temptation and, comes, call on the, on Jesus. Yes. But I love the yes. fact that you highlighted that it, that it was a demon with two demons. A lot of people don't realize that pornography is more spiritual. It's it, there is a flesh part, but there's it's also a a demonic spirit, 
And so how long did you, were you receiving any other, uh, any spiritual backlashes? I mean, I know you, you experienced deliverance. You pretty much go radical uh, for Jesus. You go radical yep. in your sanctification and in, in righteousness and not sleeping with your with your girlfriend. And then mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, making that call. I mean, even you're still very young in this and you already mm -hmm. know that, hey, porn is wrong. And then you're calling on Jesus when this is happening. Did you experience any nightmares or any other uh, spiritual uh, backlash? Oh yeah, I was the spiritual backlash was crazy. I mean, like again in our in our apartment, mm -hmm. we were seeing spirits left and right. Like I would I would be calling Sharon every day, like, what do I do? I just seen a spirit. Wow. What do I do? I just like and she would she actually taught me, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some oil. I met we met up with her. Mm -hmm. She actually prayed for more deliverance for us. Mm -hmm. Um I, I I received a lot more deliverance. And again, my 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 girl at the time, she actually encountered Jesus. Like she actually decided, okay. Oh wow. So this this you know why she actually seek Jesus? Because she had a supernatural encounter and it wasn't good. One night she said she was sleeping. She had sleep paralysis and she saw two demons, <laughs> which is crazy. She saw two demons. One of them came looking exactly like me. But oh, wow. she said she, when the demon smiled, it looked, she said the demon looked exactly like me. When it smiled, she knew it was not me. And she, it was, they were trying to have sex with her. And, and, the, it, and she's pregnant and she's having, and, I, and she, all I remember is she screamed so loud. I came running to the room and she was crying. <gasps> I saw, I saw someone, I saw something that looked like you. <laughs> and, and I was just like, I told you it's Jesus. You need to see God. That's what led her to open up the Bible. She began to read, to read the Bible. She began to just read the book of Romans. And she had an actual encounter where God took her into a vision and sh showed her Jesus Christ on the cross. Oh, wow. And she came, she came out of the vision weeping, came to me like, I, I saw Jesus, I believe, I believe. And because I was still dealing with his trust issues, I was like, nah, I, I don't, I, I believe you, sure, but I don't know. I got, I got, I, I'm not gonna, because in my mind, I'm like, she's lying. She just wants me to marry her. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, and she was just so, like, she was like, I got found Jesus. Mm. That's when we went to Sharon. We went to her church, small little church, and she prayed for more deliverance. Um, I, my wife actually got healed from pain she was having. I remember that day I had stomach pain, and someone actually came from, um, what, uh, from Bethel in Reading. Mm -hmm. They had a guest speaker come who actually was praying for healing mm -hmm. in the crowd. And I remember I had this excruciating pain in my stomach. I remember he prayed. I, I went to the bathroom, came back, and it was gone. It was, it was like the first time I experienced supernatural healing. Mm -hmm. And um, Did God and tell you that, eventually to marry your uh, girlfriend? Yes. And then that's when I was like, okay, she's saved. You know, and, and what, what, what really nailed, sealed the deal was uh -huh. like we went to a deliverance ministry down in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and Vicka Ministries, a pastor down there, um, Pastor Mark. And uh, he, his ministry is all deliverance. It's just deliverance, to like, which is cool. You know, that's his, that's his lane. Mm -hmm. And we went down there, and I remember we, uh, it was a public deliverance session. It was like 15, 20 people, and he was preaching a word on deliverance. And then he called out my wife, or my girl at the time, and started, like, giving words of knowledge. Like, you got this tattoo on your back. Your dad molested you. This and that. And it was so spot on. That was the first time I seen prophecy mm -hmm. that I began to, like, I, I doubted it. I was mm -hmm. like, after she, because after he did that, she was so like she was profusely crying. She got up to she came to the altar. He prayed for her. She got deliverance. That's when she really like surrendered, surrendered. Mm. And and when we, she, they, I remember they anointed her tattoos with oil. Like they gave her like a white you know like thing to put over her like her like I forgot what it was because she was wearing kind of like provocative clothing, like to cover up. And I and we when we left, I was like, you paid him. You paid him. You told you called before to pay him to All tell right. him that information. She was just like. I didn't say, I didn't do nothing. I have so much peace right now. I don't care what you think. Oh, wow. And when I saw that peace on her, I was like, okay, this is, this is real. And I began to pray to God. I said, God, I need your help. And I remember one day that the Holy Spirit ministered to me, my heart, and just said, you know, if you have faith in me, take the, take, take the, take the leap. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had, I had a pastor that I, I was speaking to from that church I went to. And this is around the time where there was COVID and everything. He couldn't meet up with me. He said, look, if you want to get marriage counseling, which I think is great, I think it's actually very important. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, you have to wait a little bit because we don't know what's going on. We, they shut down the church. And even with baptism, I was like, I want to get water baptized. I want to mm -hmm. get water baptized. He was like, you got to go through a course, which I think is no problem. You know, at the time I was just like, man, I don't care. I want it now. Like I was so zealous. So I told her, we're going to, you know, I love you. Would you marry me? And I actually proposed to her with um, Tim Foil, man. I took Tim Foil and made it into a ring, got on my knees because I didn't. At the time, I just was so desperate. I had the money to get a ring, but I was like, look, I'm going to give you wow. this ring for now, and then later on, I'll get you whatever you want. And she still has it to this day, and she said, you know, she said yes. And we went to get married, Pastor. Like, we actually went to the courthouse, um, mm -hmm. no witnesses, just me and her on her lunch break. You know, I was in basketball shorts and a T-shirt, man, just <laughs> to abide by the governing laws of the land. Like, we got married, and I remember I felt something lift off of me, uh -huh. you know, just, just from getting that marriage. And then yeah. we got baptized, uh, the sister Sharon and, and another man of God, 
took us to the um 24 hour fitness man the hot tub and uh <laughs> you know real street like you know street oh, COVID. Wait, wait, wait. was it during covid yeah it was it was right like right at the beginning options of COVID. yeah options were limited yeah where everybody was no it was crazy bro like it's the streets were empty mm -hmm. and we um we got baptized man and um again i spoke in tongues already i was already praying uh -huh. in tongues you know practicing it just praying in tongues because i was watching torben's videos mm -hmm. and some other ministers and she got baptized in the holy ghost like a month later but man we went through more deliverance mm -hmm. um more deliverance um from from other men of god and women of god who mm -hmm. were ministering to us because we had a lot of stuff that we needed deliverance from mm -hmm. i mean yeah I mean, that's the, what... the amount of the stuff that you were also involved you know it kind of uh, makes sense so was it did your life get better after both of you kind of recommitted your life to jesus or did it actually it, got harder it, 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 it got way it, it got so much more difficult her family my family didn't accept the marriage they didn't they didn't they didn't even want really? it to happen um i mean people you know family like it was like a family war my mm -hmm. brother my only brother you know at that time we were because uh, because of what's, what was happening in the drug game we were like like about to kill each other like he thought i was trying to kill him i thought he was trying to kill me some of my best friends just like beefs man it was spiritual mm -hmm. I mean, everyone just because when you me. when you renounced all the witchcraft, what did you do with drugs? Did you also walk away from drugs? Yeah, I had people that had owed me tabs, man. Like I had some people that owed me ten thousand, twenty thousand, mm -hmm. thirty thousand. I remember calling up these people, Pastor. I just was like, "Hey, man, like, keep the money, go give it to a church or give it to the homeless." And they thought I was working for the feds. They thought I, I got caught. Oh, wow. They thought I was a, like I was a narc. Like they were just like this guy. How does he go from that guy to this guy? Hmm. And they were just they were they were blocking me, man. They were just blocking me like changing their phone number and I was just I was paying people back that I robbed in the world when mm -hmm. I was even in high school I was calling wow, people I was paying like, I was that that's I, a true conversion right there <laughs> yeah man I was so convicted I, I would go to the park I remember I'd go to the park and I would just pray and say God I'm gonna pay this guy when I, I robbed his house when I was 17 I'm gonna pay this guy that oh this, I, I, the girls that I used I was like I'm gonna pay this girl that used that was moving drugs for me and they were bro I remember a girl like that I used to date like we moved, moved a lot of drugs for me she just cursed me out like what's wrong with you like don't don't bring no money to my house just like like leave me alone and block me and I'm just like I was I was so I remember going to the the library pastor I, I went to the library and I was like I'm gonna go every Every day to this public library I'm gonna sit down on this computer and I'm gonna type out all my sins like I was just like maybe I got to do this I'm just gonna type out all my sins and I remember just man going back to my childhood just typing up everything I could remember and crying like <laughs> like high school kids getting out of school watching me like what's wrong with this dude man like I remember I made like a false e like a a fake email and 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 because I, I was gonna just save it to this email and and just send it out and forget the password and never remember again. Like I had this whole plan. I mean, it was like 20 pages, man. Like mm -hmm. it was just me typing sins, typing mm -hmm. sins, like everything I could think about. I was watching a lot of Derek Prince, mm -hmm. you know, God, you know, the Lord brought me to, you know, the, to Derek Prince, the Holy spirit definitely brought me to him. It was a recommended video. Mm -hmm. Um, I started getting I bought his book. They shall expel demons. Mm -hmm. started learning more about deliverance, receiving a lot of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I started, uh, I actually, uh, prayed cause I, I was part of Torben's, um, ministry like the house church mm. um the network he has which is powerful really mm -hmm. powerful man they really helped kickstart me into evangelism like mm -hmm. because in TLR their uh their like their their vision or their their mission is to like pretty much you know heal the sick cast out demons you know which is what we're all supposed to do mm -hmm. cleanse the lepers you know preach the gospel so you know I learned about the gospel more I, I learned mm -hmm. about how to preach the gospel I learned about you know, that's the faith behind, like, I can pray for the sick and they'll be healed. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, and being part of that ministry, I had this disease for nine years. I had a disease, it's called larynx pharyngeal reflux. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed when I was about 20. And it was a, it was a, it was a hiatal hernia. It was, they said it was genetics, can't be cured. You can go Google it. It's called LPR. They said, there's no way you can cure it. That's it. You know, I had gotten four endoscopies. I got endoscopies in the U.S. And even when I lived in Greece, you know, they, they, they stuck a camera down my, my throat to my stomach. I had no ulcers, but at my head, the the hiatal hernia, the valve was just open. Like mm. so, acid would always come up every time I ate, bro. I'd feel like mm. I was dying, and I had to take Nexium, which is causes dementia and all this stuff. Man, on a on a three day water fast, and this is like probably less than two months being like of being saved, really really young in the faith. Um, we did a we did a we did a water fast. It's my first water fast, first mm -hmm. time ever, and um, they had a list like it was a master list for all the twenty people in the house church. Like everyone put like two or three prayers, and we're gonna pray and. One of them was like to be healed from this thing. And I had no faith in it. Like if I did, it was a little bit. I was just like, maybe I can get healed. I don't know. And then at the end of that three-day water fast, you know, we actually had, we hosted the house church at our house, our, our apartment at the time. So everyone was coming over. Everyone was getting in. I was upstairs and I was just like, man, 
I hope I get, I got healed, whatever. I'm going to go downstairs and fellowship. I heard the Holy Spirit get inside the prayer closet and pray. And I began to pray and I heard the Holy Spirit say, pray against that, that larynx pharyngeal reflux, pray against that sickness. And I, the little faith, little faith, I pray against it in the name of Jesus from what I remembered from Derek Prince. And I remember coughing up blah, 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 wow. and phlegm like this. It was nasty, man. It was phlegm. And I'm just like, that was crazy. I guess I'm, I don't know if I'm here. Like, I, I didn't even believe it. I didn't believe it. I was just like, all right, I'm going to go break this fast. They got a whole bunch of food downstairs. I'm hungry. I'm done. Like I went downstairs, man, a day goes by, two days go by, a week goes by. I haven't taken my pills. Wow. And I remember one day looking at my, my wife, like, like, man, like I haven't felt any like acid come up and I haven't taken any Nexium, like any um, um, protein pump inhibitors. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, like maybe you got healed. And I'm like, okay, we're going to test it. We're going to the gas station right now. I'm going to get two Red Bulls and I'm going to chug it back to back, like back to the, like to the face. Because back then if I drank Red Bull acids, a coffee, acid, tomato, anything with acid, it's coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And I chugged the Red Bulls, man. And it was gone. I remember being in that parking lot, preaching the gospel to everybody. Like I was like, it's just like, I was, I didn't care, man. I was just like, wow. it's just, I'm healed. I'm healed. God healed me. I was just radical, man. Like a radical dude, you know, just came to Christ. <laughs> And man, he healed me of a nine, a disease I had for nine years that you can Google right now. Uh -huh. it's, it's a genetic disorder. You can't be healed from it. It's just that it is what it is. And I, since that day, I have not had any like episode. No uh -huh. acid comes up. I could eat whatever I want. That's I incredible. drink coffee. I, I eat, I eat tomato, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. No issues. It's, I've been completely healed by the grace of God. I mean, witchcraft, uh, voodoo dolls and all of that um, Haitian <laughs> witchcraft didn't do that. Yeah. Didn't the, bring the, that. The, didn't bring that healing, huh? You're right because I remember asking a voodoo priest that I remember in, in New Orleans specifically hmm. when we were having our, we were sitting down having our session, like when they're doing the rituals and stuff, asking them about the acid reflux, and they would just tell me, "Oh, you know, just don't worry about it. Just drink water and 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 and, and don't worry. Like if you do this ritual, if you do this." And I remember, like, I would ask them these questions, and they, they would always kind of like veer off that they wouldn't want to answer it or. It'd be more money, but yes, Jesus healed me for free, <laughs> Come for on. free, in my secret place. Um, man, it was it was just it was supernatural, and that was the first time that that healing just launched me into healing, like in the mm. streets. Like I just had this faith mm -hmm. where I was like, e everyone's gonna get healed. I'm gonna pray for you. You're gonna get healed. And man, I would be in Home Depots, Walmart's. This is before there was any camera. Mm -hmm. I had no, no, no. I would just be. I would be hours evangelism, ev evangelizing pastor, like everywhere like my wife would be calling me where are you at because she still needed mm -hmm. healing from who i was in the past like thinking i'm cheating on her and i'd be like i'm evangelizing mm -hmm. i'm evangelizing like i would go and talk to anybody about my testimony about jesus and people would be getting touched encountered crying even to this day there's people from back when i first got saved who mm -hmm. still they hit me up now like man thank you man you know you know it's it's crazy what it's did, uh, you know god was dealing with you and your wife through dreams and visions about some difficult things what happened mm -hmm. So I was holding off on one thing. This is before my son was born, which was um, I had this Mercedes Benz, you know, the, like the little the, the typical drug dealer Benz, and um, and she found lipstick in California. And I, I lied and said it was my friend brought a girl, and it was a whole lie. And even back in those days, man, man in the world, my wife would get dreams, mm. and, and they were and they were they were they would be spot on about things that are going on. She had that gift. So um. You know, I always lied to her about a lot, man. I was I was bad. She'd be at work, and I would have girls in our in our apartment, mm -hmm. like on our bed. Like I was just um, you know, dealing with things, just in the world. And um, I I wanted to release to her everything. There was things that I have hadn't told her, and I was like, man, I want to release to her, you know, this this information. I remember a pastor that was counseling me. He was just like, because I told him what I did, and he was like, man, that's pretty intense. Maybe you should wait till after the baby's born. You know, like. He had given me that counsel and I, you know, I respect it, you know, nothing against it, but it was tormenting me. And then one night I had a dream and the Lord, I couldn't see him, you know, rebuked me like in the dream, like you're going to wake up. You're, and when you wake up, you're going to tell your, going to tell your wife everything. And I remember waking up, like I felt like I barely slept. I was just frustrated. Like, all right, I'm going to tell her, sat down on, the, um, on my couch, waiting for her to come back. She was walking the dog, you know, early morning and she comes in like, Babe, I had this amazing dream. I'm like, no, 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 I don't, you always have dreams. I don't want to talk about that right now. I got to tell you what happened to me. I had a dream where the Lord rebuked me and told me I have to tell you this. I have to, I can't, I can't not tell you this. And she was just looking at me like, what's going on? I told her everything, like deep things that 
not too many people would stay with the person, just really mm -hmm. disrespectful, dishonorable things. And mm -hmm. then she was like, you know, crying. And my wife is a, is a Haitian woman from New York, you know, mm -hmm. like real fight, like real feisty, real like, ah, like she'll fight a guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and she just looked at me and she was just like, now I know why I had that dream. And she, we sat down and she told me that that night the Lord took her to heaven and she actually was in heaven. She was, uh, she said she went in a chariot. There was people carrying, you know, or like, like her, her testimony is crazy. She, the specifics, mm -hmm. the details, but she got brought into like the actual mansion that God, you know, the Bible says he has a mansion he's prepared for us. Mm -hmm. She got brought into this beautiful, she said it was like a beautiful like mansion and there was people there in the water and it was beautiful. She said she was so in awe. Like she was like, she took out her cell phone. She was recording. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. And she said the father came. And when the father came, it was such a fear of the Lord that she couldn't even look at him. She dropped. And, and, and then the father told her, this is all for you, my daughter. And she, and then the father, you know, left and she, she came up and it transitioned to Jesus. And she said she was in the clouds. Like she mm -hmm. was with Jesus and, you know, she couldn't see him, but he was like a light, but he told her, you know, for, uh, forget, uh, love him unconditionally. He's a good man. Like told her that. Uh -huh. And she was like, that's why he told me that, that, I, that, that, that I have to forgive you. I have to love you unconditionally. And, and, and then she just, it was like, it was so like, she wanted to spaz out and yell at me and leave me. But she was like, <sighs> like she didn't know what to do. Cause it was such a, it was such a, she said it was so real that when she came back, she said it felt like she entered back into her body. Like, she, like God took mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. like, you know, how Paul says, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know whether I was in the third, you know, it, it was in the body or out of the body, mm -hmm. you know, in the third half, it was, this, it was, it was that same experience. And at that time I had been studying near death experiences mm -hmm. and I read this book called Imagine Heaven, which mm -hmm. is a really popular book and mm -hmm. movie. And I remember the way she explained heaven was almost identical to what that kid in the bi in that book said. So I'm like, man, this is exactly what, what this is crazy you went to heaven you encountered god like this is and and she was able to forgive me it took her some time to get you know to really like because at that point she was like i want to stay away from you i gave her her space and um but eventually you know she forgave me and um did the lord restore was, restore and brought like total healing for your relationship yes yeah pa pastor he did it, you know and it was a process i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it was like the next day she was good no she forgave me um, she still had bitterness. She got some healing from that. You know, time went by. She had to go back before me, other men, her dad, you know, with the, the molestation and a lot of stuff, man. And um, and she got a lot of deliverance and healing. Mm -hmm. She had a Jezebel spirit. She had to get delivered from a Jezebel spirit. That that didn't happen until about a year and a half into our walk. Mm -hmm. Um, I had man, I had a Leviathan, but I had rage and anger, and and usually you see that combination. Mm -hmm. It's the it's, it's the opposite of the the apostolic and the prophetic. It's uh -huh. the complete opposite. But yeah, man, it was. We got deliverance, a lot of deliverance. You know, we had mentors. We still do have mentors and um, spiritual fathers in our life, man, that just, that poured into us that mm -hmm. by God's grace, God brought them, you know, to us to really just help mm -hmm. us because we needed it. If, 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 we, if it wasn't for God's grace, we mm -hmm. would have, we would have been divorced. I mean, we went, we went through some, after the, after leaving the witchcraft, I mean, you know how many times where, you mm -hmm. know, we'd be yelling where she would threaten about killing, you know, killing herself or I would threatened to leave her, you know, having to call the cops on her, like, or she like taking like, man, crazy, crazy stuff that, that we went through because of, you know, God mm -hmm. exposing those things that we needed deliverance and healing from. That's why we know like deliverance is the children's bread. Like yeah. a Christian can't have a demon. Yeah, you're a Holy and, Ghost, yeah. And those of Holy you who Ghost are listening, filled. those of you who are listening and you're still debating whether Christians can have demons, um, you know, what what do you do with that? You know, I think it's just people don't realize how many how many times our theology not only is not consistent with the Bible, but it's also not consistent with reality of life. And so I think you're such a good example of that. Now you have a ministry. It's a remnant revival outreach center, and you're also um, um, that's also pretty much like a local gathering of people that come every single week. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you're doing? I know that you have a YouTube, but what's happening over there in Florida now with a remnant revival outreach. Amen. So we started off in our house. It was about 15 people, like a Bible study. We had we had uh, we had uh, separated from another ministry, and you know it was just 15 of us, maybe I say 15 max. And uh, we were just reading the word and praying, and deliverance would break out, healing would break out, and then eventually the word spread. And from 15, it went to 100 people in our house, to where the, to the point where the HOA actually had to to like threatened to evict us because mm. of the parking. It was crazy. The neighbors, our neighbors were actually witches. They knew what we were doing. They'd be doing rituals. We'd be praying against it. It was like a whole, 
thing, man. And um, and but then God led us to another church building. Um, then people started tithing and offering to be able to like to 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 have the funds, and people started supporting it supernaturally, man. And um, and then we uh, I you know I got ordained a pastor by uh, sp my spiritual covering actually out in Dallas, Prayer Mountain, Pastor Robert Summers. I honor him, mighty man of God. Been with many of the generals in the faith. Um, powerful man of God, and you know he, he ordained my wife and I. Um, see the saw the call in our life mentors us but um yeah we went from the house and we uh transitioned to now where we're in an actual building um a decent sized building by the grace of god um and man revival broke has, has been breaking out since the house and it's still breaking out people come from all over the world to um experience deliverance experience healing um it, just to give their life to christ um almost every service mm -hmm. we're seeing you know 10 10 people 20 people 50 people getting saved in person online sometimes we see hundreds of people online you know at the altar call, I'll say like, put a one in the chat if you want to give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And even in person lines, it just it's every service, Pastor. Like, it's it's revival. Like, it's Incredible. it's it's the lifestyle that my wife and I were birthed into mm -hmm. that just hasn't stopped. Like, it's just it's just what we're used to. You know, like, I, I don't know what I don't know anything else. So, God's really been growing it. Um, we've been with some people for you know a good two years, almost three now. You know, leaders in the church, people who are sold out, uncompromised. A lot of youth. Um, you see people in their twenties, thirties, mm -hmm. like really sold out. Like we don't like it's it's like you you're not you can't come in this church and oh I have a girlfriend and yeah we're fornicating and mm -hmm. oh yeah it's okay just you know you're good to go you can be part of the church like no we actually care about those things like you need to repent you need to receive deliverance you need to you know obey the, obey the Lord and, mm -hmm. you know and 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 yeah man people are are coming from all over and God is really um His hand is really on the ministry and we even go out to different cities and states. Um, we're, you know, we're actually going to Atlanta tomorrow for a revival on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um, and man, there's, there's almost like a thousand people that already signed up. It's crazy. Wow. Wow. And I believe, um, a lot of people are going to get saved mm -hmm. um, out there because the testimony, the, the gospel, we preach the gospel every service mm -hmm. here at, at the rock, our ROC, the rock, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God on the salvation. Mm -hmm. And man, we, the Holy Spirit has his way every mm -hmm. service. Come on, come on, man. I'm so... I'm so grateful for your life. I'm grateful for what the Lord has done for you. And I'm just li even listening to this. It, it's really blessing me, um, you know, about your your grandma. I'm kind of thinking about your grandma's probably so <laughs> happy right now looking from heaven um, mm -hmm. that, you know, how the Lord is using you and how the Lord is, has brought you home and brought you to his kingdom. And now you're walking in the real power, uh, pure Hallelujah. power, power that's, that's helpful, power that's, and and you're not seeking power you're you're now seeking jesus and this power Come is on. accompanying you because you know that's Come that's on. one of the things that this world offers is that you chase power but but we miss we miss god and so the bible says that these signs will follow we don't chase him that we follow the lord and seeing you know the the radical consecration as well you know how you when you committed your life to jesus and, and i like the fact that you're not hiding from the challenges that you've experienced you know the difficulties because when you combine living in bondage for so long and being growing up in a broken not a godly home you know you can't just pray a prayer and afterwards everything is fine yes we get we have the new nature yes our name is written in the book of life but all the damage all the hurt all the pain all the demons all the witch all, all the generational curses that stuff needs to be peeled out layer by layer and i like the fact that you you don't um you say you say the way it is because a lot of people they come out and they say their testimony in such a way that it everybody else who knows like man that, that that's not what's happening to me and you know people feel a little bit like man did i miss something because <laughs> my life just got worse when i got saved when i got oh. delivered you know and and a lot of times i tell people i'm like jesus typically makes you better at life and your life better but sometimes it gets worse before it gets better and but most important is we get the eternal life and um richard if, if somebody wants to find your ministry and um check out the, the services that you have where they can do that so on all platforms you could just um research richard lorenzo jr my full name and everything will pop up TikTok, um instagram youtube um facebook twitter which is now x um and yeah and threads and all that and yep that's richard lorenzo jr my name and what about your um, the services that you hold, um, Remnant Revival, where they can find them? So we're again, we're renting from a, a facility that has their services on Sundays. So we have ours on Saturdays. We're, we're not seven-day Adventists. We believe that Jesus is the Sabbath. But we, uh, we're renting on Saturdays. We have services mm -hmm. on Tuesdays and Saturdays. 
um, at 7 p.m. Um, show up early to get a seat, usually around 6.30. Um, come prepared to worship. Our worship team is on fire. The presence of God is um, is definitely here, the power and the presence of God. So, yep, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, Rickard, thank you so much for sharing. Could you, I just want to ask you as we close, could you speak to people right now who are in witchcraft? People yes. who are in the things that you dabbled in, who are messed up, mixed up, deceived, and um, and maybe as they're listening, something is quickening like it was in your heart when you watch some of those testimonies, something was, was churning inside of your stomach, and maybe this is happening to them right now. Could you lead them to salvation? Yes. So I would say this. Um, I'm, I'm going to preach that. I'm going to give you guys the gospel, but don't stop seeking because that's the one thing I didn't stop. You, If you're in witchcraft, you know deep, deep down inside of you, you know that's that's not it because you don't have a fulfillment. Keep asking God. Keep asking the highest power. Whatever you want to call the highest power, ask because the, the Bible says the Father, no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws you, draws you to the Son. So the Yahweh, the Father, will draw you to Jesus and you will receive the Holy Spirit. So just seek and you'll find. And the gospel is very simple. The good news is it's not bad news. It's good news. We've all sinned. One sin is transgression against God's law. We've all sinned. It started in the garden with Adam and Eve. They ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We all have a fallen nature. We all have an expiration date on our body. We're all going to die. We're here for a reason. It's to find God, to go back to relationship with the one who created us. Reconciliation means we once knew somebody, we separated and we're coming back. And the only way to come back to your heavenly father, your creator, the one who loves you, the highest power, the one who cares about you like a father loves a son, the only way is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus, born of a virgin, perfect, was sinless unto death. Jesus is the fullness of God bodily. Jesus is the incarnate, the incarnate version of God. He is God. He is God in the physical. So Jesus is the son of God, is God, came, was perfect, overcame sin, overcame death because the world, the flesh, Satan in his kingdom, no, nothing caused him to sin. All the temptation, everything that we go through, he went through and he did it so that we can become like him. In the garden, we tried to become like God, knowing evil as well, because all they knew was good. And that allowed us to have this experience in life that we have now where we got to suffer. God came to be like us and these fallen, these, these fleshly vessels so that we can become like him is grace. And when he, what he did on the cross by him being, just being tortured, scourged, just, just beaten, like the, what he went through physically and even in the soul because God showed him what he was going to go through. The Father showed him what he was going to go through before he went through it, and he sweat blood. So in the soul and in the flesh, he knew it. He, he felt that pain. He took all our sin on his back. He felt the most excruciating physical and just spiritual torment that anyone could ever feel, and he did it for us because there had to be a sacrifice. The blood that he shed washes all our sins away from the past, present, and future because blood is life sin is death so it's a spiritual law that there needs to be blood to wipe away debt in the old testament they would sacrifice animals now jesus the last human sacrifice perfect human is the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world so if you believe that he's your lord meaning he's your master you you know he's your king he's your god he's he's the one and you believe he saved you from what the works on the cross the blood he shed just by him overcoming every principality and power you believe he rose from the dead and you repent which means in your mind you turn away knowing what is wrong, knowing what is sin, knowing what, what you've been following is wrong, and you turn away in your mind and you believe in your heart, Romans 10, 9, and you, and you confess that from your mouth, the Holy Spirit will fill you. You will get filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll have the same encounter I did. You'll, you'll experience His power, His presence, His deliverance, His healing. The miracles, signs, and wonders are still for today. Jesus loves you. So if you want to give your life to Christ, it's very simple. Just, just say it out of your mouth. You believe He's your Lord and Savior. Repent, turn away. And I promise you, even where you're at right now, you could be watching this a year from now from, from when the, the video was posted. You can have that same encounter that I had in my apartment alone and God will show up because he's all powerful, all knowing everywhere at once. And he loves you so, so much. So God bless you. I pray, Holy Spirit, you have your way even right now and you touch anybody who needs, who needs to experience your presence and power right now. May every demon come out. May healing manifest the healing power of Jesus Christ by his stripes. And may they accept you as their Lord and Savior and repent from their sin. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Well, thank you so much, Rich. I really appreciate you, your time and appreciate mm -hmm. you sharing your heart. And uh, guys, can you show some love for those of you in the chat? Thank you. And I'll connect with you right after this.
Amen, Pastor. Thank you so much. Blessings to you. Uh, guys, um, if this was a blessing to you, I want you to Recording go ahead. Recording stopped. And right now, um, if you can let me know in the comments what you thought. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and drop that fire emoji. We want to honor him as well. And uh, there's links. His links are in the chat as well. And they are in the description below. You can go ahead and follow his ministry. And I believe that you will be encouraged and blessed. I want to invite um, those of you guys who watch this today if the Lord puts on your heart to partner with our ministry to bring interviews like these as well as um, other videos, content, my books, e-courses are available free of charge. And so if you are making a decision this year, not just this year, but just as the year is coming to an end, I want you to consider sow your best seed, sow your um, uh, best gift uh, to this ministry and we will be able to use it to bring more people to Jesus Christ. We see people regularly meeting people, meeting Jesus for the first time. Even today in the chat, people were sharing how they get healed watching the videos. Uh, they get touched, that God uses this ministry for that purpose. So I wanna say thank you for those of you who have partnered, for those of you who are partnering, and I wanna thank you for those of you who have given to this ministry. Because of your giving, thousands of people download our books, thousands of people go through our e-courses, Russian channels, Spanish YouTube channels, uh, my wife's channel as well. People are just being impacted because of your ministry. I want to say a huge thank you uh, for doing that. Appreciate you guys. Um, and for those of you who have never done it, but you have enjoyed this ministry and you have been blessed, prayerfully consider becoming a partner uh, with this ministry. Prayerfully consider sowing your best seed um, as this year ends. I have a lot more interviews planned that are going to be some are just mind-blowing incredible crazy testimonies uh, that we're going to bring to you guys and so it does take a cost on our end uh, to produce that we will always offer it free of charge but we appreciate those of you who can contribute and help to partner with us put some fuel on this fire so that we can spread it even further blessings to you appreciate each and every one of you um, merry christmas and i will see you guys again in the next video